Hey, hey, hey. Ty off another out of this world story from our space. Life will let you get away with something for a while, but sooner or later, you will pay the price. Everything you do in life causes the effects that you experience. Today on our space, when you get the bill, be prepared to pay. Wife cheated on her ex for me. Now she's cheating on me with a colleague. Got served with divorce. They say what goes wrong comes round. And it is so true. I'm seeing that happening in my life. My wife cheated on her boyfriend to be with me. Then, eight years later, she cheated on me with her colleague. My wife, Andrea, 34 female, and I met at a management school eight years ago. When we first started talking, she already had a long-term boyfriend of two years. I was single then. She was one of the most intelligent women in the class. Not only was she smart, but she also had a great sense of humor, which set her apart for the other girls who were either too bookish or a bimbo. Not to mention the skewed gender ratio of the man at school. I was naturally drawn to her. I instantly fell for her charm, but she said she had a boyfriend, so I backed off. In a few months, I started dating an Indian. It was just a casual fling where we both knew it was just temporary fun. But I continued to have a friendship with Andrea. She used to help me with my projects and assignments. Although I had a girlfriend, I ended up spending most of my time with Andrea. Though my relationship was merely casual, my girl used to get jealous of my closeness with Andrea. In her final year of college, Andrea got to know that her boyfriend cheated on her. A one-time thing. But she gave him a chance. I was her closest friend. She told me about her heartbreak. Though she gave him a chance and continued with him, she wasn't happy about it. She was also skeptical about her future with that guy. He was a conservative man with no proper job. He was an accountant at a supermarket. And Andrea was a free bird and a management student. She got a paid internship from Morgan Stanley. Her boyfriend was no match for her, honestly. I was still eyeing her because she was one of those keeper girls who were not just a girlfriend, but also your closest aide. Once her boyfriend visited our college, and I envied him so much, seeing how good she was to him and how arrogant he was. He had nothing to be arrogant of while well, she had everything, yet she was so sweet. I have never admitted this in front of anyone, but the truth is, I manipulated Andrea against her boyfriend. I told her how she deserved someone so better than him, in class and status. Also, he cheated on her once, so she was already half convinced of breaking up with him. With all these going on, I barely gave time to my girlfriend. I was always seen with Andrea, and when things got complicated, I broke out with my girlfriend so that I could spend more time freely with Andrea. I had already fallen in love with her. I felt she, too, liked me, but was just not able to break out with her boyfriend. On my birthday, she came to my college dorm to surprise me. I grabbed that opportunity and made my move. That was the first time we had sex. I had been with many women before, but this was special to me. This continued for some time until she mustered the courage to break up with her boyfriend before she got exposed for cheating. That very year, I invited her home on Christmas to meet my parents. I was dang so sure and serious about her right from day one, but she didn't want to hop on to another relationship immediately. She took her time before committing to me. Four years after college, I proposed to her for marriage, and we got married. That was the most beautiful day of my life. Fast forward to a month back, when I found some disturbing text messages and Andrea's phone. It was from her colleague. He was telling her how ravishing her body was, and whenever he saw her, he wanted to grab her. That was the only message in the chat, which meant she had deleted the previous messages. I didn't go beating around the bush and confronted it head on. She also didn't act defensively and told the truth. One of her colleagues was flirting with her as she got distracted. She said she felt desirable after a very long time. After all these years with me, she felt she was no longer attractive. But suddenly, that colleague flirted with her as she realized she could still turn on someone. I asked if she slept with him. She said yes, but it was just to feel good and it meant nothing. I think I didn't mention we have a two-year-old son. I asked her if she thought about her son, about her future, before slipping into his pants. She said the pregnancy had left her with postpartum depression for so long. She hooked up with that man to relax and feel good. I told her that I would be separating from her. She acted shocked because she wasn't doing it seriously. I told her it didn't matter how she had been doing it, but the moment she opened her legs for another man, it was over for me. I know I loved and adored that woman for so many years. I never loved anyone the way I loved her. But I cannot let her walk all over me. She held my hand and pleaded for one last chance. Moments ago, she wasn't even guilty, and now she was in all tears and remorseful. I know pregnancy is tough, and so is the postpartum stage. But it doesn't give you a license to cheat, right? I don't want to get into the divorce process with a two-year-old toddler between us. I don't want him to suffer, 
He loves us both equally, and that poor soul would be devastated to be separated from any one of us. I'm currently laying out the separation plan. I told her that our relationship would be just as parents to our kid, and our talks would be limited to the conversation around him and nothing else. I have moved out my stuff to the guest bedroom upstairs. We have virtually divided the house. She gets to take the front porch, living area, and her master bedroom. While I take the backyard, lawn, guest bedroom, and study room upstairs. And I'll access them through the back door while she uses the front door. We both would have access to our child's room and the kitchen space. I'm planning on separating the place with false walls and cardboard so that we don't interfere in each other's lives. She'd been crying and wailing all day, asking me to forgive her. She's saying that she didn't consider it to be cheating because she was not emotionally attached to the affair partner. She did it once just to feel the heat. It made a clear stand that we cannot be together. I'm in talks with my lawyer to make the separation formal so that it doesn't create a problem later. I'll make an update when the situation progresses. Cardboard walls, really? Just pull the plug. Why would you want to do that to yourself? Get into your own space. It would be far worse for your son to be navigating around a maze of false walls. Both of you have cheated in the past, so you both knew how this ends. You knew the kind of person she was before you married her. Update 1. Thanks for engaging in my post. I'm overwhelmed by the support and advice I got from this group. Some of you commented that my post sounded as if I still loved Andrea. The thing is, how can you unlove a person in a moment whom you've loved so hard for so many years? Of course it is heartbreaking to know what she did to me, and probably I'll stop loving her in a while. But loving or unloving someone doesn't happen in a blink. There's no switch for it, right? Anyway, the last few weeks, I've been stressful after the confrontation. The first week, I saw Andrea, mostly inside her bed, crying and moaning. On some days, her crying became so severe that my son used to get worried about it, and I had to calm him down. I discussed the separation clause with my lawyer. He made a few changes, like sorting out the finances, closing the joint account, and splitting the common house bill, electricity, water, gas, etc. Since both of us were working, we divided the expenses in half. My attorney also advised me to add one more clause regarding dating and divorce. In any case, one of us wants a divorce, then how should we proceed with it? Or if any of us dates other people, what would be the terms around it? For both these points, I added that we both can get a divorce whenever any one of us wants. And we are also free to date anyone during this period. My lawyer got it run through Andrea, and she agreed to all of it. She was still saying that all of these were not required, and we could get back together. On my insistence, she signed the separation papers. As I planned, I wanted to split the house so that we wouldn't bump into each other that frequently. The day when the workman arrived, she again started pleading with me not to go through this far. When she cries and pleads with me so hard, sometimes it becomes so hard not to get carried away. It was equally difficult for me to move on, and she was making it harder for me. Divorce would have been much easier than separation and living in the same house. My son is too small and I don't want to ruin his childhood. Also, I cannot forgive Andrea and get back to normal life with her. I cannot see her in the same way ever again. She would always be a cheater for me. Once the house is ready, I went for a two-week solar trip. I have offered to babysit our son in case Andrea wants to have a vacation because I understand that she, too, needs to get over it. Her condition has become miserable, and her face has turned pale. She barely smiles or goes out. She has been working from home and mostly from bed. I pity her, but she had got this on herself. The solo trip was refreshing to clear my head off the ongoing separation. I got a new perspective on a lot of things. My mind became calmer and forgiving. No, I don't think of reconciliation. After the trip, I sometimes have dinner with Andrea and my son. After all, we share the roof just for his well-being. We talk about his daycare, his future school, and so on. Sometimes, it does become difficult just to have a transactional talk with her because she often breaks down in tears. She still hopes that one day, we will be back as husband and wife. I told her this was never to happen because I was looking forward to downloading some dating apps. It is difficult, and some would say it is not practical. We were trying this out for our son. I'm insisting Andrea take some time off and travel because she really needs a break. Her health is deteriorating. I'm sure her mental health is also not great. I'll make an update if something happens. Thanks for putting up with me. If you have any advice to make my life better, kindly do so. I'll connect with you guys on comments as usual. She was and is a cheater. Not sure how you could love someone who was dishonest from the start. If you're already so hell-bent on not getting back together and even considering dating, why stay in that house? What are you holding on to, OP? 
Update 2. Andrew's mental and physical health keeps deteriorating with time. Her physician recommended therapy for her. She started taking therapy until I involved her parents. She had not told anyone about the separation. She needed a support system, and I could not be the one. At this time, her family was the only one who could stand behind her. She feared embarrassment. I told her she could tell them that we had grown out of love instead of telling them the exact reason. I didn't intend to humiliate her. I know I'll be called a simp for protecting her. The thing is, not everyone wants to take revenge by humiliating the partners. I have read at least hundreds of stories on Reddit, and every other post talks about revenge and humiliation. It would be worth it for someone, but it doesn't work for me. She cheated on me and I separated from her. That's my way of protecting my self-respect. Also, some people betted on the last post that I would take her back. I don't want to sound arrogant, but I'm not someone who puts my foot in my mouth. I know what I want and what I'm doing. Anyway, after a lot of contemplation, she finally told her parents about her separation, and they convinced her for therapy. She went for a few sessions and then the therapist recommended a couple therapy because her single therapy wasn't helping. I agreed to have joint therapy because I, too, needed to bend out. Though, I was calmly handling the situation at this while because I had curbed my emotions and it was not healthy for me long term. We have just been to two sessions. I can already see the difference in her. She has started going to the office regularly. In the second session, she confessed how she got indulged with her colleague. She cried her out and kept saying sorry to me. However, she was still asking for reconciliation. I also expressed my grief and sadness about her cheating for the first time. We hugged and cried her. But I also told her that we could never be a couple again. She has yet to accept the truth, but eventually, she would. Currently, she has gone for a trek with her mom and sister. I hope she comes back stronger. Meanwhile, I'm taking care of our son. By the way, I've also started chatting with a few women over a dating site. Nothing has panned up from my conversation, and I'm yet to meet anyone in person. Most of the female accounts in these dating apps are fake and by scammers. I'm being careful about it. If anyone has suggestions on a better app, kindly comment. I don't know what the future holds for me, whether we will be divorced or we will continue to live like housemates. I don't know. I'm not rushing into things. I'm not even sure if I'm ready to date again. I need to get over Andrea first before dating other women. We'll make an update if anything develops. Thanks for your support. We'll engage in comments as usual. Update 3 Hi there. I know this time, I took a long time to make an update. I guess a year passed. A lot has changed over this year. We've admitted our son to a play school and he is doing quite well there. We are super proud of him. Andrea and I are still separated, but we live in the same house, and we don't get to see each other often. The house was separated long ago, but we used to bump into each other in the kitchen or our son's room. So, we divided the days in which we would use the kitchen. We also split the days in which we would put our son to sleep so that we could avoid seeing each other as much as possible. But sometimes, we do end up having breakfast or dinner together with our son, especially on weekends. It was important for us to draw this boundary. It helped us move on. The couple therapy we took also helped us accept the reality of our relationship. Andrea did come back fresh and strong after her trekking break. She didn't plead with me for reconciliation after that. I don't know if she had accepted the situation, but she still hoped to get back together, but she never pleaded with me again. For me, eventually, I got better at my shortlisting game on the dating site. Thanks to those who suggested some really effective apps and helped me with the trick of finding genuine profiles. Through one of these sites, I met a woman, I'll call her Cairo. She's also a single mother of a four-year-old son. Her husband divorced her to marry his secretary. She had to battle a long court trial to get child support because her husband fled to another city. We started off more as friends and connected over our common past. At first, she was reluctant to meet because she didn't have a good experience with other men who just wanted to have sex. I also never forced her for a meetup because I wasn't desperate, either. But after talking for a while, she agreed to meet for a coffee. We liked spending time with each other. It was a good change for me after so many years. It mostly met in public places for lunch and dinner. A month back, she invited me to her house to meet her son. We got a little intimate for the first time. She also wanted to see my son, so I invited her to my house last week. She came with her son. I had told her everything about Andrea and my house set up. Her son and my son played together for a while when Andrea came and took her son away. Though Andrea wasn't rude, it was evident that she didn't like another woman in the house. Cairo also noticed Andrea's displeasure and said Andrea still loved me and had not moved on. The next day I was having breakfast alone. Andrea dropped in and said she doesn't like your son to be mingled with some random woman's child. I told her I was seeing Cairo and tears welled up in her eyes. 
She asked how I could move on so fast and start dating other women. I reminded her of the separation clause that we are free to date others without any guilt tripping. Cairo coming to our house or me dating other women hasn't gone well with Andrea. I met with my lawyer yesterday. He suggested that if I want to live freely, mostly dating, I should move out. It is better to get a divorce and joint custody of the kid rather than living in the same house and lingering in the past life. Committed point that in the last one year, our son has gotten used to seeing us on different days, so we would not face that big of a change with the divorce. Of course, it would take time for him to adjust to the fact that we don't live in the same house, but he is already used to seeing us separate. I told Andrea that I wanted to get a divorce, as he became miserable. She pleaded with me to stay in the house and not get a divorce. She also promised that she would not mind if I brought anyone to the house. She even said sorry about her behavior with Kyra. I told her it was not about that incident, and that divorce is necessary for our future, so that we are not stuck in our past. She promised all sorts of things and just wanted me to stay in the house. I'm planning to move out of the house without informing her, so it's easier for both of us. The only thing which is making this difficult is my son. I'm gonna miss him. But once the divorce is settled, and we get joint custody, I'm sure it'll be fine, and I'll be able to cover for this absence. I've also written an elaborate letter to Andrea about my decision to move out and file for divorce. I'm going to do that right after posting this. I'll provide the details of the divorce and my next update. I'm running short on time now. Do you think it was harder on you and your ex to move on because you were in the same house, OP? It seems like it was giving false hope to something you apparently made your mind of about. Your lawyer's right. You both need to actually physically separate. All you did with building the walls in the house was manifest the emotional walls you had up after finding out your cheater cheated. Update 4. Sorry, I ran out of time last day. I had to move out before Andrea was home. I left the letter for her on the front porch. I also mentioned sending the divorce papers to her soon. I'm guessing she called me a few times after getting the letter, but I had set an automated reply for her call that I would not be able to talk to her. I went into a no-network zone after that. I went to Alaska for a month so that she could not find me at my workplace or anywhere. Meanwhile, my lawyer had sent the divorce papers to her after a few days, and she had even signed it so our divorce was finalized, uncontested. She agreed to the joint custody of our son. I gave her the house we lived in because I didn't want a lot of change for my son. I also agreed to provide my share of the child support. So that was it. After I was back from Alaska, I got a condo for myself and settled down. It took a while for me to set up the place, but now I think it looks much better. I'm going to meet my son next week after three months. I hope he is not too mad at me. I think Andrea has finally understood my perspective, and that's why she signed the divorce papers without any hassle. Oh, I continue to be in touch with Cairo all these while, we are still not very sure of our future together. Actually, we're not rushing into things and taking baby steps. If we are destined together, we might end up living together, but I don't think I'm up for marriage again. I also hope Andrea moves on in life and finds someone to share her sorrows, because she is also not happy about her cheating. She is living with that guilt every day. I hope one day we'd become friends as we used to be. Thanks for bearing with me. You guys are awesome. Sometimes we have to physically get away in order to cut the cord. You should be proud of yourself for finally moving out and moving on. You're a good father for wanting the best for your son, and even if it was hard for you to give up the house. And as for Cairo, do whatever feels right. Just have fun with it for now and see where things go. But don't give up on love. You deserve to be loved. What would you make of this? Would you have changed anything? What do you make of OP's decision to share the house by putting up walls? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you for joining us today on our space. Be sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on our next video. Tune in next time.